Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Justin with Consordini.com, and today I'm here with a cello lesson topic for you that I'm sure that you're eager to learn about, which is how do you play two notes at once? What are double stops and how do you do them? Well, the first thing is, and I think I just answered the definition, but a double stop is when you stop on two notes at once instead of normally one note. It's kind of the same as saying a chord, except it's going to be a two note chord. Sometimes there are rolled chords or triple stops where you play on three strings, but typically there's going to be a double stop. And typically in orchestra where you do see two parts, you're going to divisi or divide between the stand players anyway. So this doesn't come up except in solo repertoire. But it's still a very, very cool sounding tool to be able to use where instead of uh, playing you can play or some combination thereof. The typical intervals that we're thinking about when we think about double stops are going to be a third, where it's three notes above, a fifth, where it's five of the scale notes above, um, a sixth, or an octave, which is the same note but up an octave. And when we use these, we have to bow both of the strings at once. So this introduces the first half of the puzzle of actually playing it, which is the fact that you have to work on your bowing of two strings at once. Two strings at once poses a couple of challenges. One, you can kind of rock your bow back and forth when you're playing on one string, um, you know, right, but I'm still playing the A string. But when you're playing two strings, you end up just losing one of the strings. There can still be a way to to shift the energy between the two. I'm not saying that, but you definitely have to have a lot more consistency between them. The other thing is your strings are of different thickness. So sometimes when you're playing different strings, you have a different contact point to adjust for that. But when you're playing double stops, you have to find a way to have one unified contact point. And it also means that if the string slips on one of them and not the other, that you have a problem. So that's gonna be the first thing that I would recommend as you wanna practice double stops. And this is probably something that you're already practicing as you're tuning. If you watch a tuning video, it's just working on the tone. that you can get from two strings, as well as the work that you're getting, getting a tone from one string. So that's gonna be the first half of the puzzle. And I, I wouldn't say that there's anything that terribly special about practicing. If you watch our video on how to just practice the open strings and get bow um, grip and bow control down, it's the same principles, just also practicing both of, or all three sets of strings together, as well as each individual string. Does that make sense? Okay. So the other thing is the left hand. And this is gonna be the more obvious one, at least in fir at first you're gonna be like, oh, it's out of tune, and you're gonna identify that as the problem. But this is why I always wanna start with the bow things, because once you have this going, this cello, the, the cello, the instrument, it's so much like an accordion, I was thinking about the other day, because uh, you don't have the, the chord ability on an accordion. But with one hand you're playing a note, and you're moving laterally, in order to produce the sound. And that's what's happening here is you're moving laterally to produce the sound and then you have one hand that's actually fingering the notes. So when you play double stops, you also have to pay so much extra attention to, uh, pay so much extra attention to intonation. And especially if you're gonna be quickly switching between them, this is why it's typically a part of a virtuosic performance to have m runs of octaves or runs of six together, but they can just add so much to a performance. You're in, you're playing, I'll give a couple of examples of how a, a sixth can really come into play. And it can just be so nice when you get those double strings. It's just such a richer, sweeter quality of the richness that you just can't really get from one note. And for the same reason, a lot of composers have liked to write octaves. Octaves are notoriously difficult for tuning because not only are you having to use the thumb typically or an extension is the other option in order to play an octave, but it's a different physical distance as you go up. And we've talked about this before with the hand positions overall. So the thing about octaves, if you want to start practicing them, is to work on hearing each individual note. And this is actually true for any double stop. Work on hearing each individual note. If you want to play a, a little double stop thing that goes, 
then you need to know what and what sound like, and you're really listening for both. And you can see it's so different the, what the fingering have to do because you have to do this uh, replacement here to get that. So it changes the technique and that's why it's worth practicing on its own because otherwise you can't use the same techniques of playing. Another exercise you can do that's absolutely great for this is to just do something that comes from Janos Scharker's book. And basically you bar your first finger over two strings, so like E and B, and then you alternate with the other finger sequentially. So. And, and then you would. Just try to come up with all the different combinations you can. This way you build finger strength between all the double stops. So as you're doing different ones, you've kind of already practiced it. Supposedly a systematic approach, especially if you are actually disciplined about moving it to different sections of the cello, different strings, um, but that is just a great way that's not quite as intense as... But it's important to practice those skills too, slowly, so you really... and really learn how the intonation works with those intervals. The best way to play a, a fifth is to bar it. Sometimes you do these finger replacement things like in the sensa. And so on. For stuff like that, you can use these, these fingers next to each other typically it's gonna be the bard. And unfortunately, fits are also devilishly hard to get in tune because they have to be consistent with the harmonic series, but also balanced with the equal temperament expectations. And this is a topic for another video. We will definitely have a video that goes more into depth about intonation. But if you wanna try practicing octaves, like if you wanna do that, try balancing, so to speak, what you're doing more towards the low E and really hear that. And then balance to the high. Ultimately, the left hand's not really going to be nearly as big of the issue as making sure that you're controlling the sound with the bow. So this is definitely octaves I would call overwhelmingly an advanced technique. There are harder things to do, but it's it's definitely not something that you'll really be expected to do apart from that sort of octave where there's an open string involved. But I hope that this video was really helpful for you guys in getting started on double stops, especially thirds and sixths. They show up all the time and they sound nice if you're just trying to play covers on your own and you're trying to find some things that sound good. Follow these principles with starting with the bow and then paying attention to the intonation and the relationship between each of the parts individually that you're playing together on the double stop. So I hope you enjoyed watching. Leave your questions and comments below. Let me know. We'll get back to you. As always, I'm Justin Leopard with ConcertDini.com. We'll see you next time.